Palm Sunday, April 5th, 2020. This Sunday begins a week in which we are given a vivid picture of the suffering and death of our Savior Jesus. We see his humble and yet triumphant entry into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, the betrayal, the crucifixion, and the burial. This week also is a week that is full of lessons being taught by Jesus and prayers that he offers on behalf of his followers. This week culminates with three special services that are linked together called the Tritium. The Sunday that we refer to as Palm Sunday in some circles is also referred to as Passion Sunday. Those who refer to this Sunday as Passion Sunday tend to focus on the suffering and of our Savior Jesus. Those who refer to it as Palm Sunday focus upon the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem as he begins his journey to the cross. It's triumphant because he has beaten every temptation of Satan that he has faced. He's kept God's law perfectly. He's proclaimed the truth of God's word. And now he enters into Jerusalem to complete his work as the Savior. By the time this week would be over, sin would be completely atoned for. Death would have been defeated in the resurrection. And Satan's power would be crushed. The reference to Palm Sunday reflects the actions of the people who celebrated his arrival into Jerusalem as they cut palm branches waved them in their hands, and then laid them on the road along with their coats ahead of Jesus as he rode on them on, on the colt, the fold of the donkey. These same people who sing Hosanna on Palm Sunday by Friday have been convinced to shout, Crucify him! As we enter this week, Lent draws to a close. Our focus is upon Jesus, the perfect Lamb of God. As we watch the Lamb, we see determination to carry out the Lord's work. We see love greater than we are capable of ever expressing as our Savior bears our sins and willingly takes the beating, the mock trial, and the condemnation that should have been ours. We will see the Lamb nailed to the cross as the sacrificial payment for your sins and mine. So please join me this week as we watch the Lamb that takes away the sins of the world and emerges victorious on Easter Sunday as the eternal champion risen from the dead, living and ruling over all things. We begin our Palm Sunday worship with the singing of hymn number 130, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna.
We pray. We praise you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ. As he was acclaimed by those who scattered their garments and branches of palms in his path, so may we always hail him as our King and follow him with perfect confidence, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We join together in the confession of sins. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son as the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. And therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. We give our attention to the pointed readings now for Palm Sunday. Our first lesson comes from the Book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9, beginning at verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. He is humble and is riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow will be taken away, and he will proclaim peace to the nations. His kingdom will extend from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of our Lord. The appointed psalm for Palm Sunday is Psalm 24, and it will also serve as the text for our sermon meditation in a few moments. We read the words that David wrote, The earth is the Lord's, and everything that fills it, the world and all who live in it, because he founded it on the seas, and he established it on the rivers. Who may go up to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, whose soul is not set on what is false, who does not swear deceitfully, he will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God who saves him. Such are the people of Jacob who look for the Lord, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift yourselves up, you ancient doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle? Lift up your heads, you gates, lift up your ancient doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord of armies. He is the King of glory. This is the word of our Lord. Our epistle reading for Palm Sunday comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. Indeed, let this attitude be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was by nature God, he did not consider equality with God as a prize to be displayed. But he emptied himself by taking the nature of a servant. When he was born in human likeness and his appearance was like that of any other man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him, and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel lesson for Palm Sunday is recorded in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, telling them, Go to the village ahead of you. Immediately you will find a donkey tied there along with her colt. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you are to say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. 
Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king comes to you humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their outer clothing on them, and he sat on it. A very large crowd spread their outer clothing on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. The crowds who went in front of him and those who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, many of us have seen the familiar painting of Jesus standing outside of the house, holding a lantern in one hand and, and knocking on the door with the other. The picture illustrates the work of God's Word as the Holy Spirit works through the Word of God to knock at the doors of our hearts. When the Holy Spirit knocks, we can answer the door and we can listen to the saving words of God or we can refuse to answer the door, pretending like we did not hear it and simply go about doing whatever it was that we were doing happily before. The focus of the scripture readings from Palm Sunday picture Jesus entering the gates of the city of Jerusalem in a celebration that stirred up the whole city. King David refers to Jesus as the king of glory who is coming. And the picture that David paints in Psalm 24 of Jesus portrays him as the conquering hero who is returning home from battle amid the celebration of his great victories that were won out on the battlefield. David tells us that the king of glory has come and he urges all to open the gates to him in celebration so that he might enter in. Fast forward then several centuries to the day that we now refer to as Palm Sunday. And we see the King of Glory entering into Jerusalem for the very last time during his life here on this earth. He enters to the shouts and the singing of crowds of people as they place palm branches and their coats on the ground before him as a sign of respect and honor. And yet when the crowds were asked who this man was, that such a fuss was being made of as he entered into the city, they simply identified him as a prophet. They still did not understand who he was and what he had come to do. And sadly, many people today still do not understand what Jesus came to do either. As Jesus enters Jerusalem, He's not entering like a victorious king would enter. Such a king would come riding on a magnificent horse and be surrounded by the best of his soldiers as he came into town. And yet, Jesus enters in humble fashion, riding on a donkey. The battle for Jesus was not yet over. On this day, he was not celebrating his victory but instead his face was set like flint with determination to face off against his enemies in the greatest war that has ever been fought. The Son of God is heading straight into battle against the combined, combined forces of Satan, sin, and death. The Son of God had come down to the earth for this purpose, to provide salvation for all man. The psalmist asked the somewhat rhetorical questions in verse 3. Who may go up on the mountain of the Lord? Who can stand in his holy place? The rhetorical portion of these questions is answered with a quick, no one who has ever sinned. These questions are meant to make us to think thoroughly through what it is we deserve. And what our sins have now made impossible. Impossible for us to go up on the mountain of the Lord. Impossible for us to stand in the presence of a holy God. Not a single one of us 
as sinners can approach God and stand in his presence. And the psalmist reminds us that he who has clean hands and a pure heart, whose soul is not set on what is false, who does not swear deceitfully. Only a person who meets, meets each and every part of that description may enter into the Lord's presence in heaven. Clean hands and a pure heart refer to an absence of sin. On our own, not a single person is able to claim that we have pure hearts or hands that are clean of sin. We all know the sins that we have committed. We all know the times that we have sinned by refusing to do what it is that God wants us to do. We also know the times where we have sinned doing the things that our God has forbidden us to do. On the basis of these facts, we know we are sinners who have filthy hands and impure hearts as we daily sin against our God. So how is it possible for us to be saved? The reason you and I have the peace that comes from knowing that we will be in heaven is because that peace has absolutely nothing to do with what you and I have done. We have the, no, the joy of knowing that we will go up on God's mountain and that we will stand in the presence of God for all eternity because of what Jesus has done for us and what he did for us on the days following this triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. The king of glory went to battle for our souls and our salvation he emerged from this week as a victorious champion as he defeated all the temptations that Satan put before him to quit and to avoid all the pain before he was done. And he crushed the power of sin by paying for all of our sins with his innocent blood on the cross. He left Satan writhing in the agony of defeat as he paid for our sin with his death finished his life on this earth sinless in a world that is full of sin and then rose from the dead on Easter Sunday and proclaimed that absolutely every single person who believes and trusts in him, in his life and in his death and resurrection will join him in heaven for eternity. He proclaimed that because of what he has done, we now have clean hands and a pure heart that is covered in the righteousness of Christ. And that's amazing news that is intended for all people. David encourages us in the closing verses of the psalm to lift up our heads in celebration of all that Christ has done for us. We get to celebrate what he has done with him. We get to benefit from what he has done for us for all eternity. David then tells us, lift up the gates and let the king of glory enter. The Lord is standing at the gate to our heart and he wants to enter. He wants to come into our lives and to celebrate the salvation that he has given us. He wants to come into our hearts and celebrate his victory over Satan. He wants to come into our hearts and reassure us that life in heaven is waiting for all who follow in Christ. And so how do we open the gates to our hearts and let the King of Glory come in? One way we can open those gates is by bringing people we love to the waters of baptism. In baptism, the Holy Spirit enters our hearts through the water and the word. As that water and word wash away the sins that we have committed. And they create saving faith in our hearts. We open the gates to our heart by making time to read. Listen and to ponder deeply the truth of God's word. We can open the gates to hearts as we lead others to the Savior by inviting them. Like Philip did to Nathaniel. and said, come and see what the Lord has done for each and every one of us. We can open the gates that lead into others' hearts by sharing devotions and worship services on Facebook. Or by inviting them to follow our YouTube channel so that they might hear the truth of God's word being proclaimed during this week we call Holy Week. The Lord who is strong and mighty in battle. The Lord who has conquered sin, death, and Satan has chosen to work through you and through me 
to spread the message of the gospel with the people in our lives. And in recent weeks, we've had different opportunities to share the word of God. And some of you have already shared that message with others who in return then have begun to follow the daily devotions and the worship services that are being posted online. Some of these people may never have been people who would have walked into our church on their own. And yet the Lord is working in their heart and their lives through the circumstances that are impacting our society to get his word to people in ways that we were not utilizing before or maybe haven't even thought of before. The Lord, strong and mighty, the King of glory, has given us opportunities and new audiences with which to share the amazing message of the work that he accomplished for all people during the week that we now refer to as Holy Week. This Holy Week is going to be different. It's going to be different than any Holy Week that we have ever experienced. The message will be the same. The message that Jesus filled, fulfilled everything that was assigned to him to do as the Savior so that he might rescue us from, for all eternity will still be proclaimed. But we will not be in church on these blessed days with our brothers and sisters in the faith. We will be worshiping. We will be worshiping in different formats. And we will still gather around the heart of the gospel message as the Lord reminds us of the depth of his love for us. We will also have new ways to invite others in to be able to contemplate what the King of Glory has done for us by hitting a share button or by emailing a website address or a YouTube channel to someone who is troubled, scared, and lost. The King of Glory has come. He has completed his work. He stands victorious on the field of battle and he's calling each of us to spread the word of his victory and the peace that it brings this Holy Week in whatever way we can do so that more souls may be touched by God's grace. The verses of hymn 363 summarize the work of our King of Glory as I share it with you in closing. The King of glory comes. The nation rejoices. Open the gates before him. Lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He, he is Emmanuel, promised of ages. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people, curing their illness. He gave his life for us, the Lamb of salvation. He took upon himself the sin of the nations. He conquered sin and death. He truly has risen. And he will share with us his heavenly kingdom. The king of glory comes. The nation rejoices. Open the gates before him. And lift up your voices. Amen. Let us pray. The king comes in this strange mixture of triumph and impending tragedy. On this Sunday of the palms, we see from the vantage of the passing years, not what the shouting crowds supposed, nor what the active agents of the passion quite intended. But we discern what heaven wrought. The king comes to shouts and singing and acclamation. We wish, dear Lord, just once, to let our inhibitions go and offer you our homage with happy abandon. A palm branch, a coat, anything that, can, that we can lay a, our hands on to strew before you in your path, to spread before your feet, and ourselves to kneel down in devotion and adore you. This is our purpose. For you are king of all the people. In royal beauty bright and in ugly gory shame, you are the sovereign who saves and leads his people. You are our Prince of Peace. Your loyal followers walk in the train of one who conquers all enemies and provides for all of our needs. You move with majesty into the battle. The enemy's hordes are entrenched against you. 
how poor and pitiful the forces of good, in contrast to the power of those evil principalities you march to conquer. But you are our strong deliverer. You will prevail through the, though the cost be death and the very depths of hell. We follow you forever and raise our voices and banners in your honor. As your inaugural was a moment for the masses and the triumph of the poor, today you are the champion of the forgotten and the homeless. Rouse all who are feeble and weary to hope. Restore the sick. Give victory to the oppressed and downtrodden. Take into your strong and royal care all those who are struggling at this time and reveal to them the good intention of your ways. The trumpets sound. The crowds do homage. The people shout Hosanna. So do we. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We close our Palm Sunday service with the singing of hymn number 133, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. Thank you.